Jacobian here, to cover some developments with Fruit of the Loom. Before delving into things, it's often asked how we know for certain the actual old articles of clothing have changed. Because who keeps pit stained, skid marked t shirts and underwear laying around? This is where we give thanks to the pack rats of the world. Many times, vintage, unopened bags from the 60s, 70s, and 80s get sold on eBay. Readily showing through transparent packaging, there's never been a cornucopia. Other than, of course, with the well crafted recreation which I found out how was actually made. Turns out the cornucopia portion is from a clip art vendor under the name Puck Rufus. I've got to admit, I was a little disappointed discovering this. I like to imagine someone so obsessed and overwhelmed by its disappearance that they painstakingly drew every hatch mark to match it just right. Nope, they just grabbed this, flipped it around, slapped the fruits on top, and called it a day. Oh well, still a great mock-up. Let's move on to the juicy stuff. That's right, it's time to start getting fruity again with more from the Cornucopia evidence pile. A well-fitting start is his newfound book residue from 1992, The Brothers K by David James Duncan, which describes a character pondering the Horn of Plenty on the tag just like so many of us used to. Inspired by the author's own life experience, you think? Next, there's been some recent excitement with the discovery of a 1973 trademark filing by Fruit of the Loom, where within the design search code it lists the descriptive words cornucopia and horn of plenty. I've actually been aware of this item since last year, and others have known about it for at least these last couple years. New people are awakening to the ME all the time, so it's been rediscovered and reposted, catching a lot of attention. It definitely grabbed my attention as well at first. After ranting and raving insisting the thing had a cornucopia, you can't help but find it interesting. While on the surface it's initially exciting to see, its noteworthiness is hobbled to a large extent in that 050914 is kind of a coverall basis search code that can also be applied to companies that don't even have baskets or containers in their logos, which is basically why I decided not to include it in my case file residuals. It kind of loses its luster as evidence. Sorry if that bums people out. To make up for it, I have some fresh, enjoyable news when it comes to one of the most exquisite pieces of residue that was included, and that's made the rounds in Mandela circles for quite a while now. Frank Wess's, who used to be Frank Weiss, but that's the subject for another time, Flute of the Loom. The cover's artist is a Mr. Ellis Chappelle. During my work on case file number two, I tried to get in touch with him and ask him about the inspiration behind the cover. He's still doing artwork and has a website with his son Reed, who's also an artist at Chappelle Studios. Unfortunately, after a couple of contact attempts, neither got back to me. I figured they'd already been asked about it a bunch, didn't want to end up harassing them, so left it alone. A few weeks after posting my video, a Reddit user started a thread and messaged me he was actually able to get in touch with the Chappelles. Now, there are a lot of trolls who've infiltrated the ME forums on Reddit, so I was wary but cautiously optimistic. And thankfully the guy wasn't kidding, and I'm happy to report he came through and fully delivered. So a special thanks goes out to Juggling Knives for making this happen, keeping me in the loop on its development, and sending my questions their way. A special huge thanks goes to the Chappelles for taking time to do this, provide answers, confirm their identities, and put themselves publicly on the record. There is a lot here that can be dug into. Knives relayed questions from many others, so links are in the description for those interested with exploring in depth. I'd like to go over some highlights. Starting with Reed's first message about springing the question on Ellis. This is Reed, Ellis's son, responding for my dad here. I remember the cornucopia specifically, as does my dad. This is the second time we've been contacted about this album cover, and Ellis and I are more than happy to answer any questions you have about it. I was a little kid when Ellis painted the Flute of the Loom cover, and I remember specifically this album being a reference to the cornucopia in Fruit of the Loom's original logo, which is where my dad says he specifically got the inspiration for the design. When I talked to him about it, he said, why the hell else would I have used a cornucopia? Yes, why would he indeed? That's what we've been pointing out all along. And frankly, I'm a little bit shocked it takes a complete newcomer and myself a late arrival to the Mandela party to only just now be trying to get a hold of these guys, just saying. Okay. Q&A time from the man himself. Question. Did you draw slash paint this album cover from memory, or did you have a photo, print, or clothing item you used as reference? Answer. I think I had a t-shirt with a Fruit of the Loom label that I looked at for the reference. 
I used to have, in fact, I still have a lot of them, file folders with images such as a folder for musical instruments or a folder for trucks or automobiles. But this piece was primarily made up from my imagination other than looking at the Fruit of the Loom label. Just like I said he must have on my main video, I'm happy to point out, made evident by the perfect fruit for food color matching that would only occur if directly referencing the logo. Question, does Ellis have any memories of trying to recreate slash convey the look of the Fruit of the Loom logo? Answer, I looked at the Fruit of the Loom label I had for reference and I based the shape of the horn flute on the label I had. It was probably a t-shirt or something I had in my vast wardrobe of t-shirts. Question. Do you know for certain that there was a cornucopia? Answer. There had to be. I would have no reason to paint the image that way if there had not been a cornucopia. The flute takes the place of the cornucopia, but it would not make any sense at all if there had not been a cornucopia to begin with. It's a take off of the label, so it has to resemble the label substantially. Otherwise, it would make no sense. I agree. No sense at all. It's not a successful parody without it. Same goes for the other known references. To those I've had conversations with about this, don't forget what you said at the time. That if someone had the artist on record directly stating he referenced the cornucopia from the clothing tags or logos, that then we'd have something. Well, now we do. Don't go playing the fallible memory card on me and pretend you never asked for it. Don't go saying this only proves he's misremembering like the rest of us. This is the first hand account you guys ordered and are now getting served. I know my deniers though, and deniers will continue to do what deniers do best, and that's deny. It's really hard not to gloat about this. You don't know how many debates I've had over this album with critics saying it proves nothing, that there's no way we could know the artist's inspiration, yada 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 that it's the fruit and food colors matching that makes it a parody, ba da ba da ba da He's just taking creative license, realistically contorting and inserting the flute like this. Never mind that his pose and position precisely the way we claim the cornucopia used to be. Everyone just ignore that, right? Now, to show I can offer a fair analysis, unlike most Mandela naysayers, there are statements within Ellis' replies that show he doesn't quite get the full extent of what's occurring. Reed is maybe still trying to explain the entire scope of the changes like many of us had to with family members in the beginning. Upon complete realization of current history and under deeper questioning, he might backpedal and cave on these statements. Just like with anyone else, it's hit and miss as to whether or not they solidly maintain the impossible has happened. At this point, it's pretty much my expectation for most people directly linked to these items to give an NPC style response fully updated and in line with current reality. For example, I managed to get a hold of the band Mr. Doubtfire about their drive-by fruiting album. Gotta love how this sticks to the fruit theme, right? They unfortunately responded as expected, claiming the name is something they came up with on their own. Haha, <laughs> it's like, whatever guys. Nice try pulling a yesterday hijacking Robin Williams' original line. And let me guess, Pierce Brofton is the head of your fan club, right? Drive-by fruiting, <laughs> yes. I shouldn't be so hard on him, I guess. They could have been asked this before, knowing it leads to a Mandela Effect discussion and don't want to get into it or sound crazy, so they just skirt the issue. Hopefully as more people like the Chappelles and that business owner from NECS come forward, it gradually becomes easier and easier for the closeted affected to emerge. For me, I've never hesitated shouting it from the rooftops. I know what I've witnessed. I know the life I've lived. And have zero shame publicly declaring something that will be proven correct in the long run.